Okay, we're back. I forgot to put my feed dogs on. I had been using this machine for embroidery, so that's all better now, and my foot pedal's working, so we're going to work our way across using a zigzag stitch. Most of you who have a sewing machine will have a machine that's got a zigzag stitch. It's perfectly acceptable for the underwear. All right, now let me turn these, and you'll see. Notice how that problem, that wing, is gone. So we have a very nice smooth transition. A, a little, it's a little iffy here, but I think that's just because I had that little trouble at the start. So if you have a small bit of distraction, let's call it that, you just get it in your hand, grab your trusty scissors, snip that off. It'll just be beneficial later when we're trying to put our leg bands on, okay? So that is the story regarding that crotch uh, issue that everyone is having with that seam. So I'm going to come around and I'm going to make a recommendation. If you have the serger and you are routinely having this issue that I'm talking about here, get your pattern and take the liner. And a good ruler. I like the see-through uh, rulers for the cutting system because I can see through them. So what I do, here we have, uh, first I lined it up with those points and I drew that line, which helped me to show you what I was talking about. So once you've got that line drawn, take your ruler, line up the quarter inch. So this measurement from here to here is a quarter inch right here. All right, and we know that our serger does a quarter inch seam. So we're gonna come here, then we're gonna take our rotary cutter, or if you don't have a rotary cutter, draw, draw a line like I did, and then use a scissor. In my case, I have a rotary cutter. I'm gonna adjust my pattern, and then I will never have this issue again. All right, once I've adjusted the liner, I need to do the same transition or adjustment to both the front and the back. Okay, now you can see I marked I marked the issue on the on the back piece, and if I lay them together, like like you see me doing here, I can just do one cut. And I probably could have lined all three up, but it's a little more iffy. All right. Now, I have to say, it looks like this adjustment's been made already because you see how small, how short that stretch is right there? So this one's already been adjusted. So all I have to do now is adjust this one. I'm going to line the quarter inch up with that seam that I drew based on the liner. Cut it off. Now, that's, it's a minor thing, but it magnifies when you're pulling your project right sides out and you discover you've got that problem. So, my recommendation, and, and it's uh, the same on all the patterns, it's because if you're on a sewing machine, a quarter inch is really difficult on knits, but on the serger, a quarter inch is ideal. So, I'm now talking with this adjustment, this only applies to people using a serger not if you're using the regular sewing machine. If you're using the regular sewing machine, all you need to do is know that you are going to be sewing from this point straight across. That's your seam. Okay, if I had a pencil handy. Hold on. I'll draw the line. Make sure. That's your seam. So it's just a little easier on a regular sewing machine. You can sort of adjust your project wherever you need it to be. On the serger, you don't have that same kind of, well, it's not as easy. Let's just put it that way. Okay. All that conversation uh, has to do specifically with that. Now, the next step, I've probably killed that conversation. Beat that dead horse or something, whatever you call that. I'm going to move these patterns aside. 
we're going to figure out because at this point we have our we've got our panties sewn together we need to prepare for putting the leg bands and the uh, belly band on but I'm going to say that it can get pretty challenging coming around with your machine with this on the underside let's say we're putting in this leg band and we're coming around sewing 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 what likes to happen is this folds back and we don't know it and we continue to sew we get our band all in there only to turn it and find out we've got something going wrong right here so to prevent that from happening and to eliminate having a you know spot to put coins or whatever we don't want a pocket there uh, although you can have one if you're if you're good with that that's fine but for those of us who don't want to have to fight with this piece let me show you what I like to do and I'm going to meet you over at my other machine and for anybody who's curious yes you do need all these sewing machines because that way you can set them up and sadly I have to borrow this piece between the two girls but you'll see what I've done this sewing machine I keep set up this way all the time I have a twin needle and there's different sizes uh, the needles are actually mounted you can see this blue bar the two needles are mounted on that blue bar and then there's one shank from there up so it goes in the machine just like any other needle except that below that blue bar you've got two needles now you can get them where these are really close together and it'll do a pin tuck stitch or further apart which is great for canvas or fleece I like this particular one for knit okay all you do once you've got that in you're going to bring two needles uh, or two threads up um, onto your machine and then thread them together until they get down to the needle and you'll see uh, how I do it I just lay my spools of thread on their side use these to keep them from going everywhere and then what I do to make sure that the thread doesn't get stuck into my uh, flywheel or whatever that's called I just run them through a bobbin that's sitting on the bobbin winder it's not winding they're just sitting there and from there then it's going to go through the machine just like normal okay now the way a twin needle works the bobbin thread is shared between the two needles so on one pass the left needle will catch the bobbin thread on the next pass the right needle so what we don't want to have happen is that the upper tension so loose that the bobbin thread ends up being straight and the upper threads end up becoming the zigzag so let me see if I can find a scrap of something to try and demonstrate the problem hmm white on white's not really great but this will work I, as you can see, I calibrated my upper tension. Um, we'll do that first, and then I'm going to mess it up purposely to show you. All right, so what I'm going to do, you know, I guess a smart girl would have pinned it, but I've got it laying flat. And I'm going to have the left needle just about off the edge under here but not quite off okay I also want to come over to here and I want my uh, stitch length to be six on this machine I don't know what that translates to I think it's just some random it's a nice long stitch in other words so whatever your machine uses for a measurement a lot of machines only go up to five so maybe pick four and a half or four the other thing I want to do is on my machine I've got this little indicator if you have that turn it on if I do this it's off okay I need it on and that opens things up in the throat plate so that those needles can both come down and clear all metal parts it's not very fun when you forget to do that and the first stitch you take breaks your needle okay so I'm gonna get started I don't go too crazy when I'm doing this one because I 